Good morning. Um, last week's uh, Sunday school lesson was Psalm 73. Uh, I'm going to try to do that uh, right now. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. Lord, we're thankful for this day. Thankful for caring for us, Lord, and, and taking care of us through our life. Lord, thank you for your word to guide and direct us. And we ask your spirit to, mm -hmm. to lead us. Help us, Lord, to uh, to be obedient to your word, to be doers of your word, not just hearers. Lord, we thank you for uh, our everyday walk of life that you give us. Lord, help us to be the witness you need us to be. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray for all those that, that don't know you as Savior. We pray that somehow, uh, sometime today, someone will be able to lead and guide that person to, to you. Uh, Lord, again, we lift up you. So our friend and Savior, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. These things we ask in Jesus' name, and only your will be done, Lord. Amen. Uh, I want to thank everyone for listening to these, and uh, I'm going to try to keep them up as long as folks are listening, and uh, some of my friends listen, and uh, certainly appreciate the support and the encouragement. Um, <clears throat> today's psalm kind of goes along with the uh, 37th psalm, which we looked at it uh, a while back. And uh, David kind of gives the uh, opposite approach as to what Asaph does. Now, Asaph gets straightened out toward the end of the psalm, and uh, that's a, a good thing. But he starts out in a, in a note of praise, and he, he lets us know right off the bat that, uh, that he realizes God is good to Israel. Uh, he states that, but he also uh, tells us about how that he's troubled. Now, it's, a, it's a common thing that, that plagued people uh, even today, after thousands of years have went by, uh, people wonder why do bad things happen to good people and why do good things happen to bad people. And uh, that's that's something that's, that's hard to explain. We don't know all the, the details of everything, but he, here's one of the key issues. We're living in a world that's, um, where Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and, and we've talked about that before. And You have to realize that... Um, he is alive and well, and um, him and demons are uh, wreaking havoc on the world. They're influencing people. People are listening to, to Satan's influence. And uh, when they do, then things go wrong. Um, happened way back in the Garden of Eden, didn't it? Um, and uh, one thing I didn't mention in, in one of the lessons I meant to was that Adam, uh, Adam tried to blame that on his wife, didn't he? Uh, he told God for the woman that you gave me, uh, she gave me that fruit, and I tried to blame it on the, on the wife. Um, and that might be a tendency that us men might do. Uh, but we're responsible for our own actions. <clears throat> and uh, Asaph, uh, he is, uh, toward the end of this, he comes to his senses and he expresses how that... Um, he was wrong in his thoughts, but right off the bat, uh, it, it's kind of surprising. He talks about how that this was getting him down, and a lot of people tend to struggle with the fact that sometimes people who do wicked things seem to uh, get along quite well. Um, let's look at verses 1 through 3 out of Psalm 73. Truly God is good to Israel, even to as such as are a, of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps have well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now, he, he tells us right off the bat that God is good to Israel. He makes that statement, so he's, he's very clear on that. Uh, but he also says that he almost slipped. He almost spiritually slipped. Um, and he tells why, because he was envious at, at the wicked, because the wicked seemed to be getting along really well in, in his lifetime. And we, we see it happening today. We see people who do uh, really bad things seem to get along quite well. And that was causing him to stumble in his faith. And he, uh, he, and he almost stumbled. He says his <clears throat> feet were almost gone. My steps have well nigh slipped. But uh, he came to his senses toward the end of this, and that's, that's the good thing. 
But in the 37th Psalm, which we studied here a while back, I want to read you what David says, uh, just the opposite of what Asaph is talking about. He, he was telling how to avoid stumbling, uh, and it's quite simple. Uh, but a lot of things are simple, but sometimes they're hard, just hard to do. You know what to do, but it's sometimes hard to do it. Well, David writes in the uh, 37th Psalm, I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 3. He says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Now David, just in three verses here, tells us, you know, don't worry about what these people, these people are doing these evil doers. Don't be envious of what they obtain and what how they advance in whatever uh, field they're in, because they're soon going to be cut down. There, there's coming a time when what they're doing is not going to last. Uh, don't not to be envious of what they can obtain. Um, he says, trust in the Lord and do good. You do the right thing. Just because the evil doer is doing the wrong thing. Uh, they're cheating to get a job bid. Um, they've been a thief or, or whatever. They've connived to, to get ahead, and you do the right thing, but you're not up with them. Don't be envious of what they can obtain by, uh, by deceitful means. He's saying God's going to take care of you. Now, I don't mean that I'm going to be driving a Corvette or, or a Cadillac or something fancy like that, <clears throat> but I'm going to be took care of, and that's all I need is to be took care of. Uh, when you've got enough, that's all you need is enough, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, one fellow used to say I worked with years ago, he says, uh, it only takes what you make. Whatever you make, you, you find a way of living on it. <clears throat> but as long as we have enough, that's all we need, isn't it? And that, that David quickly gives us the the formula for uh, worrying like uh, Asaph did and almost slipping spiritually. Uh, we should not, because someone does something evil and prosperous, we shouldn't let our faith in God uh, waver because of that. Uh, David says, do the right thing, God's going to take care of you. But Asaph admits that this bothered him to the point where he was almost going to slip spiritually. Um, it's and you know it's easy to see just why Asaph did this. Yeah, it's easy to see uh, why it bothered him because a lot of times when someone does something really uh, dirty and deceitful and seems to get ahead and and get by with it, it it tends to bother us. You know, we we wonder, well, how come that guy he's <clears throat> he's driving the Lamborghini and you know I'm driving the Volkswagen and uh, you know, look how he got ahead, and it tends to eat at us. And uh, Asaph said he was becoming envious of these people because they were prospering. Um, we see it in our day, our life today, and a lot of times we might think, well, uh, I wish God would just come down and straighten us out and rain down judgment on, upon all this and straighten out all these bad people. Well, you think about that. What if God had rained down judgment on you. I think about myself. What if God would rain down judgment on me just like I deserve? When I deserved it, would I, I have ever came to Christ? Um, the thing is, God is being merciful. People wonder, well, why don't God come down and straighten this out? Uh, I've told before about a fellow I worked with that uh, told me, he says, well, one of the problems he had was that he says, if you've seen uh, a child being abused, and you could stop it, would you? I said, well, sure. He said, well, why doesn't God? If God is almighty and, and he, he can do all these things, why doesn't he? Well, uh, God doesn't judge all sin right at the instant. If he did, there wouldn't be any people. And God is being merciful, giving people a chance to repent. Um, is that person going to be judged for what they do wrong? Will judgment be be rendered, it, it will. Justice will be done one day. They're not going to get by with anything. 
uh, every idle word is going to be be brought in uh, out in the open. So we're not going to get by with anything. Uh, and we have to realize that. But right now, God is giving people a space to repent. If God had judged each and every one of us and rendered judgment right at the instant that we'd done something wrong, there wouldn't be any of us. We'd all be gone. Well, we, we look at our world today and we see a lot of uh, a lot of wickedness going on. We uh, we look around and we we think, well, the wicked seems to be the winners. They seem to be winning. Uh, a recent uh, event, um, an anniversary, on January twenty second, twenty twenty one. That is the anniversary when our Supreme Court uh, decided that abortion is legal, uh, a hot topic in our our country and also around the world. Uh, it's a very hot topic right now. Uh, January 22nd, 1973, our Supreme Court ruled abortion legal. Now, they can make anything legal they want to, but that don't mean it's right in the eyes of God. That don't mean that they won't answer for that. But in 1973, January 22nd, that's when the ruling went down. Um, this is 48 years later on January 22nd, 2021. Uh, and I got this information off uh, um, ACLJ's website, American Center for Law and Justice, uh, Jay Sekulow's um, organization. And uh, there's a link to this stuff, and you can, you can get on there and check this out if you want. Forty-eight years later, 62 million abortions have been estimated to have been performed in the USA. Since 1970, over 9 million abortions have been done by Planned Parenthood. <clears throat> uh, this year, <clears throat> at the time I looked this information up, this year, and we're not out of January yet, <clears throat> 23,741 abortions have been done by Planned Parenthood in our country. Um, in the United States of America this year, there have been over 55,000 abortions performed <clears throat> in the USA. And a little over 23,000 of those were by Planned Parenthood. Since 1980, and remember, in our country, abortion was legalized in 73, but uh, in 1980, worldwide, there's an estimated 1,602,000,000 564,721 abortions been performed uh, by uh, people worldwide. And these are the estimates. And like I say, you can get on the website and you can have a link to this, this counter. And as that, this abortion counter showed those numbers rolling down, you know a baby is being killed every time that number clicks over. And these are estimates, I, I believe. Um, but what is the leading cause of death in the world? And uh, you might think, well, it's, it's some dreaded disease. It's incurable. Uh, not the virus. It's not the coronavirus. It's not another virus. Abortion is the leading cause of death in the world. That's amazing, isn't it? Now, that was on Jay Sekulow's website, ACLJ. Um, another thing I got off of... Uh, ACLJ's website <clears throat> uh, talking about how the wicked win well uh, you may have a different opinion of this guy but I'm just going to give you the facts on of what I researched on this fellow Joe Biden then candidate has made the statement now this is off of ACLJ's website you can look it up he says, as president, I'm going to do everything in my power to expand access to quality, affordable health care, including reproductive health care. Uh, now, reproductive health care is going to mean abortion. So we talked about Planned Parenthood, how their role in abortion was played out and how that uh, they were caught selling baby parts for profit. Uh, Joe Biden then says, I'm proud to stand with Planned Parenthood in this fight. And uh, <clears throat> back sometime when he was uh, running, 
uh, of course he's now president, but uh, Planned Parenthood announced its plans to donate him $45 million to his campaign. So you can see why Joe Biden wanted to back Planned Parenthood. $45 million. They could afford to give $45 million to Joe Biden's campaign. Of course, he's going to open the floodgates <clears throat> for abortion, it sounds like. Um, so the wicked seems to win. <clears throat> now, in the inauguration, uh, Joe Biden's wife held a Bible and he placed his hand on it. <clears throat> uh, but you know, you're, you're better off to uphold the Bible uh, than to just hold the Bible. Placing your hand on the Bible looking like, well, you know, I'm a nice guy, I'm a religious guy. Uh, I believe in this book. Uh, well, if you believe in that book, then you shouldn't be uh, passing laws that contradict that book. Uh, I've seen a, a little news uh, thing on my phone, and it uh, was talking about uh, some time ago, a good, good while back, uh, Joe Biden visited a fellow that's in the uh, TV industry, and I can't remember his name. I couldn't pronounce his name when I read it. I read this article, and I don't normally get into all this stuff, but I, I read a little bit about this to see just what was going on. And uh, the, the topic uh, that he, one of the topics he talked with this fellow about was the, um, the gay marriage. And uh, of course, in Hollywood, the, the transgender thing and the gay marriage and all is a, is a hot topic there also. You see more TV shows <clears throat> promoting that. Um, and I actually had to agree with something Joe Biden said on this issue. Um, and this guy praised Joe Biden's words because he said he stepped ahead of Obama. He got ahead of Obama on this issue. And, uh, and I don't know if this is verbatim exactly how Biden said it, but he, he's, he said it comes down to who you love. Well, I, I agree that abortion issue does, or I'm sorry, the uh, gay rights issue does come down to who you love. It comes down to when you come to the same-sex marriage issue, uh, do you love God's Word, do you love God, or do you love that sinful lifestyle? Uh, the Bible is plain on this, that is, that is uh, a sin, and we, we can't mistreat these people, we can't hate these people, we have to uh, try to point them to the gospel, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we've got to pray for these people, mistreating them is not, not the answer. But on the other hand, we can't support what they do. Uh, we can't endorse that in our churches and allow that to be an okay thing in our churches. We just have to hold our ground. Uh, but that's, that's the world we live in right now. That's what we have elected as president, as someone who believes in these issues, and the Bible is totally different on it. They seem to have won right now. Um, and, you know, that does trouble a person. It troubles me. Uh, I would like to think, uh, you know, some say, well, there was election fraud. Did they win deceitfully? I don't know. Uh, I'll put it this way. I would rather think that they cheated and got in there than, than the American public actually chose them. If we actually chose them, we have chosen people with a sinful uh, <clears throat> agenda. They seem to have won right now. Well, in ASAP's day, the the wicked seem to be winning also, and that, it troubled him. And he, he talks about how they seem to get along good. And he speaks about that in verses 4 through 12. Let's read that. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence cover them as a garment, their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak lawfully, uh, loftily, if I pronounce it right, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth, therefore his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. 
Now he's, he looks at these people and they seem to die peacefully. Uh, now we record in the Bible how, um, we, we remember in the Bible how uh, it's recorded that um, Herod in the New Testament, uh, he died a terrible death. Uh, God does sometimes rain down some judgment that we can see the, the wicked uh, perish in a terrible way. But um, there are, are folks that uh, are doing wicked things and die an easy death. Uh, and um, they don't have the troubles other people do. Sometimes you'll see someone that is uh, what we call a good person having all kind of trouble in life. And someone who is a wicked person seems to just get along good. And it makes people wonder, why, why does that happen? Um, they're prosperous. Uh, they're proud and proud of it. Um, you see these things going on, and it, it can trouble you. And it troubled Asaph back at this time, and he's, he admits to this. Um, they, these people speak bad of God and seem to prosper. So nothing happens to them. And, uh, you know, sometimes we may think, well, I wish just God would come down and straighten this up. And one day that's going to happen, but right now it, it, we're, we're living on God's timeline, and he's got a plan to come back one day, and he'll come back and take care of all this. But right now we're living in a world where Satan is an influence and people are listening to his influence. Uh, when we see... The uh, ungodly, they may be violent. It says violence covers them as a garment. They may be prospering. Uh, but another verse out of Psalm 37, Psalm of David, verse 16, it says, uh, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Uh, that is really good advice. Uh, we may see the wicked prosper a whole lot, but you're a whole lot better off with a little than all what many wicked people can accumulate. Uh, why? Because what they've got is all they've got, and it's here and now, and it's going to be gone one day. Uh, God's inheritance is forever for those who choose Jesus Christ as a Savior. Uh, what the wicked can obtain right now, they may be living, as the old saying goes, high on the hog, but that's all going to end one day at the snap of a finger and uh, that's all they got is what they've got right now <clears throat> so we got to keep that in mind just what little you have that you've got honestly uh, is better than what a lot of people have got wickedly um, let's now the, all this troubled Asaph until he done something he went to the house of God uh, let's read verses 13 through 17 Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Uh, Asaph was thinking, well, you know, I've been doing the right thing in vain. I've cleansed my heart in vain. Uh, I've washed my hands in innocency. And th these things were, were bothering him. He thought, well, you know, I've done, a, I've done the right thing, but, you know, I'm not getting ahead. And it's, it's really eating at him. He's become envious of the, the wicked but until he went to the house of God, and then he understood. Uh, the Bible tells us in Hebrews eleven twenty five, speaking of Moses, and you know Moses had, was raised up in Pharaoh's uh, palace, and he chose to go back and lead his people out of uh, of uh, Egypt. And you remember the story how he, he killed an Egyptian and had to flee. And then God called him back. And he, he came back and led the people out of Egypt. He was God's, God's man there. And it speaks of him in Hebrews eleven twenty five. Now Moses could have stayed in, a, in Pharaoh's palace and lived a, a lush life. But it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to 
enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Uh, he could have enjoyed sin in Pharaoh's house, but he chose to suffer with the people of God. <clears throat> uh, there's pleasure in sin for a season. Uh, the Bible is, is plain about that. You can have some fun doing some sinful things. It might please the flesh, but that is only for a short period of time. Uh, God has something better for us. And uh, Asaph is coming to his senses now. Uh, I can't quote this exactly how I heard it, but uh, someone has said something to this effect. It is better to give up what you can't keep to have what you can't lose. Uh, Asaph was looking at Satan's bait. Uh, Satan shows us something that is going to satisfy the here and now, and that's usually what we're worried about is the here and now. i got to take care of what's affecting me right now. And not, and a lot of times maybe we won't look out at the future at what the end result of that's going to be. And Asaph was looking at Satan's bait. Satan reels a lot of people in by giving them pleasure in sin for a season. And they, they enjoy the here and now. Why does a person stick a needle in their arm? Uh, because they get some relief from reality for a few moments. It's an instant release. Uh, just like uh, someone may tip a bottle up, uh, may take a pill, whatever it is. they It's an instant release from reality. And uh, they get some pleasure out of it for a, a short time. But we got to realize that uh, God's pleasure lasts to eternity. Uh, right now we live in a sin-cursed world where Satan is alive. And... <clears throat> God is giving, us, is giving us a choice right now. Do you want Satan or do you want me? Uh, that is the choice that God is giving people. And a lot of people, folks are choosing the here and now, uh, taking Satan's bait. There's something better out there for you. And, it goes, and it's only through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, Asaph realizes now the end of the wicked. Let's look at verses 18 through 20. <clears throat> Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakeneth, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Uh, one note on verse 20 real quick. Uh, you know, we know that God does not sleep, but awakening here just means... Uh, springing into action. Uh, God is not asleep at any time. Uh, but uh, Asaph went into the sanctuary of God and he realized that these people's end um, is going to come quickly. Now that seems to be different from what we read in verse 4. It says, For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Uh, it seems to to be a different outlook than what he had at the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> but what he's talking about here, there's a time when judgment comes. Uh, there's a time when uh, God is going to bring an end to the wicked. Uh, you, Asaph is saying, well, some of these wicked people, they didn't die a terrible death. They died in uh, just a an easy death. Maybe they went to uh, sleep and didn't wake up. Uh, seemed like an easy way to go. Uh, Asaph sees this, but now he's saying something different. He's saying, how are they brought into desolation in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Uh, before he was saying, you know, they seem to do well. Uh, they weren't in trouble like other men. But what's happened? Well, there comes a time in each and everyone's life that your heart's going to beat that last time. You know, your last breath is taken. That instant as your soul leaves your body, your spirit leaves your body, then you you are going to know if you are right or wrong. And at that time, if you're not right with, with God, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your sins are not under the blood of, of the cross of Jesus Christ, then you're going to realize you're wrong. You're going to realize that you're lost. You're going to realize that there's no hope. And 
I think this is what Asaph is talking about here, how they brought into desolation in a moment. Uh, they might have enjoyed an easy life. They may not have had trouble like other people. They may have died an easy death, but at, at the time of death, then they're going to realize they're a lost person. Just in a moment, they're going to be surrounded by terror. I mean, that is a scary thought. It's a scary thought for the unsaved. It's a scary thought for the, the people who are saved. It should make a person who is saved realize that you need to get the, the gospel of Jesus Christ out to people who, who need to be saved. Uh, realizing that, that that's their end right there. If they don't come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ and accept him, that this is the end. They're going to leave out of this world in a lost condition with no hope. At that point, there is no, no change. You've had your opportunity to make your choice. You've made your choice, and there's no turning back. There's no purgatory to get out of. You, you're, you're doomed. Uh, you're doomed to a lake of fire with Satan, a false prophet. Um, it, it's a sad thought to think that, that folks are going to leave out of this life that way, but here's the thing. Jesus Christ tasted death for every man, as the writer of Hebrews points out. And so everyone can have salvation through Jesus Christ. No one has to leave this earth unsaved. And that's, that's the good part about it. Well, Asaph has, um, has come to his senses. He realizes that these people are in a slippery place. Uh, I think our country's in a slippery place right now, endorsing some of the things we are. Uh, what do we do about that? Well, we need to pray for our leaders of our country. The Bible instructs us to play, pray for those who are over us, um, that we can live a peaceful life. And we need to pray for these people. If uh, these people turn their heart to Jesus Christ and get saved, then uh, the country will change. Different laws will be put in place. Um, We've got a uh, Congress lady in um, Michigan who's very much against Israel. Uh, spoke some things about them and the coronavirus vaccine, how they should make it available to the Palestinians or something like that on, on a, upon a, all the events that took place there. But she was criticizing Israel as being racist because something about the coronavirus and the Palestinians. Well, I don't think Israel has any jurisdiction over the Palestinians. Uh, they can't. Uh, you know, they can't go over there and tell them what to do or not to do. Um, this is the world we live in, uh, in a slippery places. And what does it mean to be in a slippery place? Well, uh, in Romans chapter 1, God talks about people got so wicked, they made a choice so much for the for their wicked ways that God turned them to a reprobate mind. He just let them go, go on the direction that they're going. Uh, which is the wrong direction, and I think that's the direction our country's going. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you know, our nation will turn around, that our leadership will, uh, will turn around and accept Jesus Christ as a Savior. And you know, I'm no one's judge, but when you're endorsing the things they're endorsing, it, it just sounds like they couldn't, they couldn't know Christ. Um, a slippery place. God lets you go the direction you're going and just lets you go on. Sometimes uh, you know, we'll tell one of our children, look, you know, don't do that. You, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Well, if they're not going to hurt, get hurt real bad, you know, we may just let them, let them do something and, and realize that they're, you know, that's the wrong way to go. We just let them have what they want. Well, God may just be letting us have what we want. Uh, in, in Romans chapter 1, it talks about him doing that. People turned over to homosexuality, that he just let them go. In a slippery place, you reject a God, you just say, well, I, I want this lifestyle. I want, I want to live like this. I don't want anything to do with God. And God says, well, if you don't want me, then you just have to go ahead. Uh, but God is there for them if they want to turn their heart to them. But they, they have rejected him so much that they're... They just no longer want him, have no desire for him. Uh, well, Asaph realizes that uh, that he is had some wrong thoughts. His theology was wrong, and he admits that. Let's look at verses 21 and 22. 
Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant I was as a beast before thee. Uh, he realizes that um, his thoughts about worrying about what the, the wicked could gain was just was all wrong. And he admits that. And he, he's sorry now that he, he had those thoughts. But he's been honest. You know, God's word doesn't only record the good things about his people, but it, it records the things that are wrong, just like David's sin, just like uh, Moses, uh, his sin. It, it doesn't record just the good things, but it lets us know that by, by recording the sins that, that God's people do, it lets us know that, that we too are not going to be perfect but there is still salvation for us through Jesus Christ. It lets us know that God's mercy is still there for us if we'll come to Jesus Christ. Uh, God set the, the price for sin, which was the death of his son. And the, the price that he paid was he paid it for us. It was a, a price that we couldn't attain to. Someone might say, well, God's asking too much. Well, he, he paid it himself. So he set the price and uh, he paid the price. So you, you can't really argue with that. Uh, so Asaph started this psalm with praise. And he ends it with praise. Let's read uh, the rest of the psalm, verses 23 through 28. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast hold me by the right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterwards receive me to glory. Whom have, I in, whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon earth that I desire but thee, besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Well, fortunately, Asaph got straightened out with God. He realized that God was not, is not unjust and that the wicked will be judged. They're not going to get by with anything they're doing, <clears throat> although it seems like they are. It may seem like in our world today the wicked is winning, but there's coming a day of judgment. <clears throat> the only way you can be ready for that day of judgment just put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He paid for your sin, and so you don't have to pay for it. You get the, the righteousness of Christ imputed to, to your account, and you can stand before God a saved individual. And I pray that each and every one of you accept Jesus Christ. If you haven't, today is the day to do it, I believe. Don't put it off. We don't know. It's getting darker and darker, as I say all the time, and we know it's closer and closer to Christ coming back. So uh, if you do that, uh, let us know at the church and be glad to talk with you. Uh, I'd like to hear that. So uh, next week will be the 78th Psalm. And Lord willing, uh, all goes well. We'll be looking at it next week. So you all have a good day now. Bye.